process, free speech, the ability of people to peacefully dissent. All those are universal values and need to be respected. And whenever I see violence perpetrated on people who are peacefully dissenting, and whenever the American people see that, I think they're rightfully trying. Tears of our nations cry for our freedom. Someone has to die. A human sacrifice for a basic human right. All these random acts of violence. I want freedom so I can't be quiet. Teardrops fall down my face in silence. Trying to stop war and political riots Hold these random acts of violence I want freedom so I can't be quiet Teardrops fall down my face in silence Trying to stop war and political riots Tears of violation Reality that overflows to our land. Protesters fill the streets of Tyran. Natives death captured by an amateur cameraman. Too close to home, like a cross from the clan. Less than 60 years ago, I was one third of a man. Green ribbon, peace and love is the plan. Hope the voices of freedom's not hard to understand. I have some very sad news for all of you. And that is that Martin Luther King was shot and was killed today. Remember Martin Luther King dedicated his life to love and to justice between fellow human beings. He died in the cause of that effort. Imagine waking up to find the world has changed. No more fights. You suddenly Witness bloodshed from LAPD to skinheads, misled individuals in the street dead, growing pain from blood stains washed by the rain. It's hard not to cry when you see human slain punishment from governments, corrupt presidents. When you fight for your life, you end up losing it. So protest if you're feeling me. I got my eyes on the world, but it's killing me. All these random acts of violence. I want freedom so I can't be quiet. Teardrops fall down my face in silence. Trying to stop war and political riots Hold these random acts of violence I want freedom so I can't be quiet Teardrops fall down my face in silence Trying to stop war and political riots This is Dan Thornburg. Thank you for watching us at Disaster Area News. I'd like to now introduce Stephen Bush and Lady J. Have a great night. This is Lady J. The title of the song is called Tears of Our Nation. And I wrote this song not only because of the shocking death of Nada Sultan, 
but because it's symbolic of how people are still fighting to acquire or maintain simple, basic human rights. The message has to go out and it's starting right here, right now. Thank you for your time. Hello everyone. My name is Stephen Bush, CEO of Disaster Area Music. We created this song because of the disturbing images that we've seen on the internet as well as television. And we hope that you take this song in good faith. It's true, those that fight for freedom will always be on the right side of history. Slavery is a system of forced labor that has existed throughout the world for thousands of years. In America, slavery began in the 17th century when people in Africa were overpowered and forced to leave their native land, their culture, and their families behind. Europeans uh, and others did not simply march into Africa and just take people off. I mean, there were battles, there were wars that were, were lost, you know, by the British, by the French, by the Portuguese, as well as those which were won. You had um, males and females leading forces against the enslavers. Europeans responded by coercing one tribe to enslave another, threatening to arm their enemies with terrifying new weapons if they did not cooperate. These tribal slave traders selected strong, healthy males and females between the ages of 18 and 35, although children were often captured as well. The African captives were chained together at the ankle or wrist or linked at the neck by a wooden yoke. Once bound, the captives embarked on a grueling march, sometimes as long as 600 miles to the coast where European ships awaited them. Many perished from the rigors of the trip. Others resisted their captors and were killed. The Atlantic crossing took from four to eight weeks. Men, women, and children were crowded into tightly packed quarters. The ordeal was so demoralizing that the Africans often sank into a deep depression. Some chose death rather than to endure the degradation. They attempted to escape on, on ships uh, by simply, if the opportunity offered itself, by, uh, by leaping off and uh, drowning or, or whatever. Uh, once they were bound by the uh, continental uh, United States, uh, the um, protest took the form more of insurrection. The first slaves in the American colonies, a cargo of about 20 Africans, arrived at Jamestown, Virginia in 1619. The number of enslaved Africans increased steadily each year. By 1763, the colonial population included an estimated 230,000 Africans, most of them slaves in the South. A slave was someone who could be forced to work from the age of eight, six, four even, long hours at tasks that someone else decided. A slave was a person who had no right to a vacation. A slave was a person who had no rights to wages. A slave could have no property. A slave could not marry. By the late 18th century, the textile industry had entered a period of rapid development in both England and in the northern United States. 
This growth created a tremendous demand for southern cotton. In 1793, Eli Whitney developed the cotton gin, a machine that cleaned cotton five times faster than manual methods. As a result, more slaves were needed to pick and haul the cotton. By 1860, there would be four million African slaves in the United States. This enormous population of slaves was owned by a small group of the wealthiest and most powerful whites in American society. As African slaves toiled in the fields, laws were created to enforce their low status. They were prohibited from participating in lawsuits, from owning property or firearms, and from possessing alcohol. Most states did not recognize slave marriages and often prohibited slaves from learning to read and write. The treatment slaves received from their masters varied tremendously. Some owners were brutal sadists who worked their slaves mercilessly and threatened them with corporal discipline so painful that it amounted to torture. And if you were ordered to do a task that you knew would be dangerous to you, you had to do it. So even though it's tempting to put poverty and slavery together, they were very different. And the difference is that enslaved workers had no rights. 